Welcome to the new screencast uh, from Coding Freaks. Um, today it's all about Entity Framework version 6. I will show you some stuff um, regarding larger projects where a bit more sophisticated stuff is um, needed, in my opinion. And so I will show you today some points. Okay, um, first of all, I just created a simple solution. I have NuGet Package Restore um, switched on. And I just created the data.core project, which is a class library containing a simple model. Um, this model is uh, just de um, con um, containing two uh, entities, uh, vehicle types, which just hold types for vehicles, and uh, it's related to the vehicle entity, and the vehicle entity is just some data to show you some stuff. Okay, <coughs> this is a model, and now to use this model, this is um, kind of simple. We just I just created a tests uh, folder here, and I just will go and add a new projects in this test folder, um, and I will do a unit test project and call it uh, tests dot core. And now I just want to use uh, uh, load tests, for example, and I just say <coughs> uh, get entities test. Let's say I do some very straightforward stuff using a, s a context, and this context will be sample entities, and this is hidden in reference data core. And just why it's not working, most people um, will just add a reference to system data entity. That's not a good idea. Just use NuGet uh, to do that. So I will add a NuGet package from NuGet.org to Entity Framework and install it here. Uh, this is very important uh, because uh, when the package version is um, getting updated, you will get a fresh entity framework version which, which is consistent to the one you use in data.core because the assistant which generates you models from the database here from entity framework, he's adding this to the packages config and now you should have the same in your packages config. Okay, I have a load test. And now a simple test could be um, var amount is equals to ctx vehicles dot count. Okay, this is it. Uh, he's doing this one. This is resharper, and um, I'm just getting this because I don't have the right r namespace in it and reshaper knows this and let's just use this one so system.link is coming into place. And now I can do the stuff uh, var expected equals to zero uh, equals to hmm, what do I do? I don't know exactly what it is. Just do a this one, then act, and then assert, just to make it the cleaner. Assert are equal, expected, and amount. To make this work, I have to say amount is zero, and then amount is this. Let's try it and run the test. And now it should fail. Where is my test explorer here? Just dog it. It's failing and saying expected. Um, oh, it's failing because of another reason. I have to take my connection string from this project to this project. It's good that we can show this too. Okay, and just rerun it now. Just say, oh, it's passing. <laughs> That's good. Means no vehicles are inside. Uh, let's say I will do the other table, vehicle types count. Run it again. Let's say what's going on. It's failing because it's saying um, actual are three types in the ty uh, available. And so I just um, go ahead and say expected are three types. That's more clear. 
and now it's running through because he's getting free types and free are available. That's good. That was not the sophisticated stuff. Sorry for um, the the messed up demo, but the point is <coughs> what, what I want to show you. The first point is that this line of code uh, is not too good because let's uh, take something from Entity Framework 6 and let's say we want to ensure that each um, operation from Entity Framework which is performed against the database is locked to the trace. So how can we do this? Each context has got a database uh, instance and on this we can um, take the lock. The lock is a property of type action of string so action of string is nothing else than we can assign a method that takes a string parameter and returns void to this lock property so that uh, we inject a, a logging method to entity framework. So how could it look like? It could be for, for instance something like this trace right line, yes, system diagnostics trace trace right line this would be uh, valid. I just zoom in. I know I forget this all the time. So this means, dear Entity Framework, if you want to log something which is sent to the database, use this method to log it. Okay, let's see. To, to see this in action, it's, it's a good point to set a breakpoint here and to debug this test. Mm, build errors. So, and now I got build errors as you can see, as you saw, uh, because what was the point? The point was that he just watch in the in the output. He has trace right line, and trace right line has a lot of overloads, which makes it very uh, uneasy for entity for this for this property to know which overload we exactly mean. So we need a lambda expression here. Let's say the M points to the message message with or MSG to make it clearer. This is the variable which is should be passed as a string, and we now do it this way. So now he knows that he should lock this the message using this overload of trace right line. And now when we debug this one, he should be clearer. Now I have to just take a look where my output window is. Just a second, I bring it in. Now, let's do it here. Scroll down. And now, if I hit the next breakpoint, he executes the count. And here is, just can't zoom, you have to uh, take a deeper look. Here is a SQL command including opening connection, completed in blah 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 milliseconds and this was created using this method. So that uh, that's a very convenient way to create um, <coughs> logging um, with Entity Framework but the problem is, let's say I have another method, another test method, just say um, connect test is a simpler uh, we don't need this one and we just say um, var x is ctx vehicles count and we just want to ensure that this is try catch and assert um, or let's say arrange var result is true and now we say in case of exception will result false and now assert simply is true result. So now let's say we want to logging here too. So we just simply copy in the same code and now we just run this one too. Should work. Yeah, works, but this is code, this line and this line, this is code which is dirty in my opinion because now 
uh, assume that in this solution you have, I don't know, 300, 400 uh, lines of code where somebody creates a new sample entities and you have to assume that uh, this person is remembering that this line of code has to be set so that logging is enabled. There are plenty of samples where you want to have control over how this uh, sample entities instance is created. So how can we do that? Um, thinking in terms of uh, object orientation and in terms of class design, uh, this is pretty simple. So what you will do is you will inject a, s a single point um, to have control uh, over generation of your context. So first of all, let's say we uh, take a class and into the data.core and say it's called context util. Now this class could be make public, made public static so just to clear out it just only gets static members and now we generate a public, public static uh, property which returns sample entities and we just call it context. It's read-only property and we would just say var ctx equals to, or in this case var result equals to new sample entities and now we can say result just database log moves to msg uh, no, equals to msg moves to trace and now say let's, let's say we just take another method of trace, trace information, and now we pass in this and now we return the result. So just re re sharper helps us. This simple method says, hey, just use the context util to uh, get yourself in context. So how can, could we rewrite our code now in the tests? Just let's concentrate on the first method here. It's not this one. It's now saying I get the context by using context util dot context and now I can get rid of this. So if everyone, everyone remembers to use this line of code instead of this line of code everything should be fine. But the problem now is the user can choose if he wants to use the context util or if he wants to go directly to the sample entities and that's bad. Okay, let's go back and do it a little bit better. If we just take a look at sample entities here, what is it? Sample entities is a class which was generated by Entity Framework and which just is a public partial class with a public constructor. So a good point would be to make this constructor internal. That would solve our problem. But if we just do it in this way, internal. That's good. Now we go to our test. We just made it internal and we get a warning here because this is not possible. This is exactly what I wanted to achieve, that nobody can do this. But if I now go, go back to the data core, I just did it all the way, everything is fine, and I now regenerate all this stuff, just pressing save on the model. Now, if I go to the context, it's public again because Entity Framework just uses this T4 file, and this is a key, to generate this uh, class, this sample uh, entities class. So, if we concentrate on this T T4 file here, TT, then we can take a look at it and we have to learn T4 as a domain specific language, but it shows us that here is a line of code and we just can simply change it and write internal down here. If I hit save now and just take a look at my new context, it's internal. If I just go to the model and save it again, it's creating all the stuff newly and it's internal still. And now I can calmly go to my test, to my load tests, and I see, okay, I get this error, so I can't just use new sample entities. That's only this 
this sort of code is only allowed inside of the data core assembly because the constructor of sample entities is internal now and I have to use context uto dot context and I can forget about this line. Just to prove this I will again hit a breakpoint here and I just um, want to debug all the selected tests and when we, we reach this line we should see that the select here is shown us and you see it's it's blue because we used in the context we used the trace information line and it's blue because I have an extension here it's called VS commands it's available via um, Visual Studio Gallery and this will just um, color up your uh, output window for instance it's it has a lot of more functionality but coloring your output window is one of it one of them so that's cool um, in, the, in one of my next casts I will show you how you can um, uh, bring Entity Framework to the point that it's uh, just using one line instead of this multiple lines for logging that's possible too but for the moment we got what we wanted we used just to show it we used the T4 which is coming with the EDMX and which is the basic of generating all this stuff and we just changed this line to um, tell Entity Framework if you regenerate my um, context class please use this one. So now for for example we can go here and say hey um, let's say summary um, use c cref equals to context util dot context uh, to get an instance of this type boom 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 uh, slash summary you can write down any valid code and now just take a look and here is a summary on the constructor and now if I go back to the load test and I will say new context no sample entities um, new sample entities, oh there is uh, no hint, uh, but you know what I mean, you get the idea I, I think when I use this and go to the uh, object browser and just go to my data data core and just take a look at uh, the sample entities here and you can see the summary here. That's That would be very nice to do. Okay that was my first trick to show you and I think um, uh, a lot of people don't know about this. My second um, and last one is about um, getting those entities and, um, and um, giving them more meaning. What I mean is at the moment all my entities and we can see them here, here's the, the vehicle entity which is a partial class and we have a vehicle type which is a partial class too. The problem is we don't know as, uh, as so much about these two types. They are both POCOs, they are both um, um, inheriting from object directly and uh, that's not very valuable for me. So um, what I do in most cases and that's why I generated this logic folder, I do the following. I add a new project here just follow me and you will see what I'm going up to and I just say in the logic let's say logic dot mm, logic dot interfaces so I just generate this one and let's say I call this interface I entity yeah rename it but it's an interface and let's say my interface has something long id get set. Why do I do this? Uh, okay, I have a convention, a database convention, which you can see here in the model. Each of my entities has got an id. It's called id, 
and it's of type n64 in the database uh, in in the in the model because it's big int in the database it's a sql database and i just want to say that um, i want to represent this behavior of all my entities you can do your own stuff um, using this interface so my target is that all my entities let's say we take a vehicle will implement int can we do this take the reference so all my entities should be I, I entities which is okay because they already have an ID and so they match the criteria of the I entity they, they, they match my contract how can I do this this is a bit more complicated first of all we see we just added this line here this is not this line but this this code and he just added uh, us a log uh, using here so the easiest way would be to say hey um, use this one logic dot interfaces dot so that's it and surely we depend on generating this reference so we have to do this once okay but then we can do this one so but I want um, you know to show you how you can ensure that this one is applied all the time so how can we do this? It's the same like using uh, like before with the context, because when I now go to the model and just hit save, then my vehicle, if I reopen it, no vehicle, it's, it's forgotten about all this, this stuff. It's, it's logical. So now we have to go into not this TT but into this TT. This is um, uh, <coughs> used for generating our entities and here you can see in this two lines that there are two T4 methods which are responsive for generating the using directives and the entity class opening. The entity class opening is nothing more than just simple this line. This is the entity class opening and these are the using directives. So sample model, when I just use for entity class, search for entity class opening, I come to this one and this is the method which uh, turns out as a C sharp method and this method has to be um, uh, just changed by me. I just uh, have something here, entity class opening, and I just changed it to this one, just indent it a little bit, just to uh, show you what it is. This part is the old one here, and I'm just not returning it, but storing this as a result. And then I have a pattern. The default pattern is uh, whatever comes here, um, double quote, uh, not double quote, but um, you know, inherits from hmm. And if the result already contains this this sign, then I say, hey, um, I have to use comma instead because it's already inheriting from something, and I just have to append my interface, and I just do it in this way. And now I can just say, hey, I have to append. The, in, the namespace here and now I hit save and guess what it's in all my classes so now I have said a bit more about my entities than before so this is very valuable when I will use generic methods uh, let's say I have another new library just for showing a sample using this in the logic. And let's say it's logic.core. And now I want to say it's an entity util, for example. And let's say this entity util is generic t entity, where t entity is an i entity. This tells me a little bit more and I have a generic constraint and let's say I want to get 
all public list of t uh, get all and let's just say I know he, he, he needs a sample or he needs a context t context and let's just say where t context is uh, db context db context is not available now so I have to again get entity framework just will to will go through all of this to get this and now this is a very uh, con convenient class I can say list of t entity and get all t context and what we can do now is we expect an open context return context get uh, db context set of type t entity um, to list what about this so t entity must be uh, a t entity okay so he says yeah I know what he means it should be a class 2 so now he's fine with us so the generic constraint just show it we have two generic constraints one says that t entity uh, whatever we put in there should be a class a reference type and it should implement i entity and um, now we can say um, t context should be some kind of db context so this class is very um, straightforward now we can use it just do another test and say let's say we will do util test uh, let's see if it works this is stage one um, why util equals to new entity util of uh, vehicle and sample entities so what he needs now is a reference to logic core we have this util and now let's say uh, we want var uh, result equals to util get all and now we need context util dot context so for example and now as we just want vehicle types util get all and now we can say assert are equal um, same as here expected of free expected and result dot count oh, it's a little bit dirty but you know what I mean let's say if this works first we run this go oh arrows yeah that that's true because he now recognizes that we need um, um, reference to logic interfaces we just give him this reference because of the generic constraint he needs it let's see if he builds up now build succeeded okay run the test and let's see if our test yeah it's passing you see and now just debug this this line is interesting now go and debug this okay let's get rid of this okay we are here and now we're just using entity util and we go one step oh we don't see he's gunning the entity util and now we come to the get all and now just let's see what's going on we have this entity util and t entity um, uh, is now vehicle type and t context because of the constructor is our context you can see sample entities and um, now he uses this method it's it's coming from entity framework each context has this uh, not uh, yeah the method set this set says hey give me the type of entity you want to get the list of entities from because we don't know it it's generic class so if this works we should use try catch and stuff like this here if this works just go ahead and take the list of it and 
we hit a 5 and if we just look at the output now we should see a lot of bugs uh, aborted ba 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 we should see that he just used how is it let's go ahead and debug it again and then let's see if we see the logging too because we use context to context where is my output there it is and we see yeah he got select extend label from everything is working as expected now but why the interface all of this we could have could have achieved without the generic constraint because this would be sufficient to um, achieve this but with the identity constraint we can do stuff like um, let's say public list of long get all IDs and we can say uh, context you to set select uh, entity just the ID to list for, for example so you could extend the interface for your own cases uh, not just to know about the ID property but in this case we can say hey give me all IDs or find me one uh, entity because ID is a, a primary key in my case and now we can use something util, mm, util test 2 and now we can say not get all get all IDs and uh, we should have if we debug this we should have a good method to just get a list of IDs here in the result now we have three and we just have three IDs that's because now we know something inside our entity utility. we know it's an I entity not only a class and if we just extend uh, this, this I entity for let's say date time nullable date deleted so now we should know something it's not building now because I don't have a date deleted on my elements but that's that's a nice way I wanted to show you this because this gives you uh, um, some idea what's possible on extending the default um, the default behavior coming from entity framework on your entities you can now just build up a cleaner let's say mini framework for your uh, application and as you can see it's um, it's a good coupling of, of, of classes it's not too heavy you could use um, further techniques too but this is a good first approach and the next um, part of this I think two-part series I don't know exactly I will cover some uh, points on this area because you can do a lot of uh, things inside entity framework for instance dependency resolving for instance log formatting stuff like this this, this will come in my next screencast and let's see <laughs>